Hi, welcome to lecture 11.2. We are now going to simulate and visualize the motion of our multi-body system. In the last lecture, we uh, arrived at the equations of motion of the system, and that's what we need then to uh, now move into numerical evaluation and integrating these uh, differential equations that we have such that we can find the trajectories of the states of both the q's and the u's. So I will come back to this example. Same one in the online notes except that we are going to uh, change this force between the particle q and the mass center b0 or bo um, to an arbitrary force f and I'll show you how to deal with that um, when we get to the numerical code. But we have this system, two rigid bodies, two rods that each have inertia, mass. Um, their motion is restricted by these uh, two linear torsional springs. Right? And then the point Q can slide along the uh, rod B. Right? So um, what we had from the last lecture is some function and this is a vector function and it is a function of the state and I'll say to some parameter vector that are, are constant and then potentially time okay so we have the state vector I'll we'll call this the parameter vector. This though changes with time, so just to make that clear, I can and then p does not. Okay. And this function returns the time derivatives of the state variables. So in our case x dot. And we're gonna typically make x dot to be the generalized coordinates stacked on top of the generalized speeds okay so this function here um, given the state at any given time t and the parameter values we can then find well what is the derivative then of the state um, or the derivative of the uh, state variables at that time and but what we are interested in is um, how does this x of t change over time? So we're looking for if I had some single x of t versus t, maybe it moves around in some way, right? That's the state trajectory. And in general, the only way to find this if fm is a nonlinear function is to numerically integrate. So we can find this x of t by numerically integrating from some initial time to some final time this function x p t all with respect to time. And then one last thing to note before I move to the new Jupyter Notebook is that this f of m, fm, um, we know that is some matrix m inverse times this uh, vector gm. Okay, so we have found these two pieces in uh, symbolic form. Let me move that to a more useful position. All right, so we found M and G in symbolic form, and uh, we could also solve this M inverse G symbolically, and it's possible and fine, but it uh, will generate very large uh, symbolic equations of motion 
typically that's not that interesting it's not helpful to look at so uh, we are going to just have the symbolic forms of these separately and then we want to evaluate this numerically and when we evaluate this uh, linear solve here m inverse g that gives us the uh, function fm which we then can numerically integrate over all right So if I come over to here, yeah, I've, de I've detailed that in the in the online notes, and you can read that more carefully. But uh, I do have a notebook here that has all the equations from last time, and I'll re-execute. There I get Keynes equations, and in this case I extracted the MD and the GD. Uh, and if we have a look at the unconstrained equations of motion, <clears throat> I, uh, I show those here. So MM is made up of the uh, MDGD, but also the MKGK. And so we have the kinematical differential equations and the dynamical differential equations that would create this whole scenario. In our case, the for this system, we have made simple choices for the generalized uh, core speeds so that uh, we can just say that the Q dots equal the U's and we don't have to formulate the M, K, and G, K explicitly. But in your uh, homeworks, you'll have to, you'll have to do that. All right. So now I'm left with these two symbolic equations. And the first thing we want to do is um, make it so that we can numerically evaluate these so i have um it's useful to if i use this me find dynamic symbols of md um, right that only has q1 and q2 in it and if i look at D, we've got this arbitrary function f q1 q2 q3 and then all three u's and then you can also check with uh, md.free symbols. And then I'll just uh, do a union there for that set and do gd.free symbols. And we can see that um, g, k, t, l, m, and are the um, constant parameters that are present here. Uh, t will show up there too, but uh, it's not one of the constants, it's just a result of how free symbols works. So, but this shows us the variables present. I have defined, I believe, a Q. No, I have not. So we're going to have a Q. We're going to make that a matrix. And then I'll put Q1, Q2, Q3. And this, this will be a column vector, symbolic column vector with the Qs. And I believe I have a U. Yep, so we have the Us. And then if I um, also would like a P, which I have not defined, so let's create that. And I'll just put them in the order of that free symbols, G, K, T, L, and M. So I've created these symbolic column vectors for all of the variables that are present in MD and GD. Okay. So now we can move to uh, numerics. Um, in SymPy, um, you are going to use lambda phi and everything that we do to go from um, uh, symbolics to numerics and um, I caution you and I put a warning in the online notes that you want to be careful and not uh, mix mix up numpy and sympy terms right there's numpy cosine sympy cosine a lot of common um, things there's a numpy solve and a sympy solve um, so be careful about mi mixing those up um, and use lambda phi as this bridge that takes you from symbolic to numeric, right? So let's do, uh, I'll call this eval, uh, maybe dynamic differential equation pieces. So I'll say eval nine, and um, I'm going to bring in lambda phi, and then I'm going to give uh, as the arguments to the function I want to create, I'm going to give it a q, u, and p. Right, so those are the only things that are 
explicitly present, except um, there's also this F. Right? So that's different than the only mode. So what I'm going to create here now is an R column matrix. And we're going to call this, let me just put the note here. Um, these are, we'll call these specified uh, inputs. Okay, so this F is something that we need to specify at any given point in time, right? And I've just called it F, it's an arbitrary force, but on the numerical side of things, um, maybe we want to replace it with a spring, maybe we want to replace it with a control system, maybe we would like to replace it with uh, some a sinusoidal varying input or any input that you can possibly imagine. Uh, we could create different functions for that. So it's a specified force in this case, and I, I'm going to use the variable r for that. All right, and there's just going to be one. We only have a, a single r here, so um, sorry, f should be there. Okay, so I have a one by one column vector. So I'm going to have q, u, p, and then we also need r. And then I'm going to evaluate the MD and the GD in this case. Right. And that should work if we uh, then um, say MD vowels, GD vowels equals eval DYN. And then I need some uh, parameter numbers and numerics here. So I'm going to steal them from the notes so I don't have to retype them. And where did I define those? Right here. So there's some Q vowels. And some U vowels and P vowels. All right, and then we'll also need some R vowels, which are not in the notes. And I'll make this an MP.array. And then I'm just going to pick a single numerical value here that'll be um, the same for any value in time just so we can check. So I'll just pick something like a, a force of 100 newtons or something. Okay. Newtons. And so now we have some numerical values, except I need to import numpy. numpy is MP. And those are our um, three arrays that should now work with our lambda by function. So if I give it now the Q vowels, the U vowels, P vowels and R vowels it should function, but it doesn't. Too many things to unpack. Expected four. All right. Okay. I have uh, since we don't have the the spring. Right in our model here, I need to delete that P vowels. Boom, boom. Now we've got a name error, name error, immutable dense matrix is not defined. So that did not get converted properly. Why is that? MDGD, MD. GD, they both look good, and or maybe I'm supposed to if I put these here like this. Okay, so I have to if I'm giving multiple um, outputs to Lamify, I need to put put them together. Apparently, did I do that here? Eval. Yes, I, I group them in this in this list. Okay, so this should work. Now, if I look at MD vowels, I get a three by three array as expected, and this should be a um,
column vector here. All right, so now I can evaluate MD and GD uh, together. Um, one thing to note, well, I'll just show you what happens first, but uh, if I check out um, np.linalg.solve, this is actually how we solve linear systems numerically with NumPy. So there's a solve function that takes an A and a B, and that will solve the AX equals B equation. So we've, our, in our case, this is the MD, and the B is the GD, and that should give us our numerical solution, uh, which are the time derivatives of the U dots, and the, um, the time derivatives of the U's in this case. So if I say U dot vowels equals NP dot lin alg dot solve, MD vowels, and GD vowels, and remember we do have a negative sign uh, to get the solution we want. And then if I show UD vowels, I get a result, right? So this is the, these are the accelerations in our case um, from of the generalized coordinates because we've just made Q dots equals U dot use, Q dots equals use, and, uh, and we get this result. So I'm able to substitute values numerically to get the two matrices. I solve that system of linear equations, and this results in the U dot terms, right? Which is one portion of our state equations. Notice that this is a uh, three by one array, okay? And that's uh, because we created this lambda phi from a three by one matrix here as SymPy stores it. It's a little going to be a bit more convenient if we work with um, um, just this is a 2D array because it has two dimensions, uh, but it'll be a little more preferable if we make this a 1D. So it's going to be better to squeeze this, and this will take out that extra unneeded dimension. So if I squeeze the GD vowels, that makes it a 1D array, and my result then becomes a 1D array. All right. So now I have the UD vowels, and we know that the uh, QD vowels simply equals the U's. All right. So if I um, have some values of U's, which are right here, U vowels, they just equal each other. In our case, so we have the simple result. So the QD vowels stacked on top of the UD vowels make up our state. So I can use mp.h stack, and that will actually put the QD vowels uh, stacked with the UD vowels. And we could call this x vowels. I'm oh, sorry, x dot vowels. X dot vowels. All right, so this is the result that we need our function to return. All right, so we've got the, uh, the function fm, it returns x dot, and we've now calculated x dot, okay? So let's put that all into a function, and uh, I'm gonna define an eval right-hand side of these uh, differential equations. We've now solved them, made them explicit for all the x dots, so we're gonna evaluate the right-hand side. And this function, I'm gonna make it take a, a t, uh, this current the current time t the current state x um, the parameter values and the um, uh, whatever r happens to be at that time t so we'll start with that uh, and then I need to take what I've done above here and we sort of we need to pack that in so if I eval here and now well, what are the q vowels i need to extract them out of x so the q vowels will be the first three so we could say zero to three items in x the u vowels are the last three three to the end we don't need to put anything there i can also take the zero there so that gets the first three elements and the second three to get our u vowels and q vowels. 
um, we're passing in this vector p and I'm actually going to just remove the term vowels because inside of the numerical function we're not going to overwrite any of our symbolic variables above so now I can do that and then p can go directly in there and in this case r will also go directly in there as a 1d array and then we solve to get the u vowels so I'll just say that's ud and we can take away all these extra vowel things so that we can just make it simpler I solve it md squeeze gd yep and then uh, the last one is that qd equals a u which we figured out yeah and then we want to return x dot so we could use mp dot h stack um, qd over ud All right that's the basic function and now if I uh, eval the right hand side and I use uh, we can pick any value of time I'll just say 2.1 because our functions aren't explicitly a function of uh, time only implicitly if I want to give it the uh, uh, x's mp dot uh, h stack right qd vowels ud vowels sorry u vowels q vowels u vowels and we need to give it p so that's p vowels and we need to give it uh, r which i have a r vowels and that should return the same result as we have here one two point two three da, 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 da. we get the same results we have now a working function that evaluates the right hand side of um, this system okay <clears throat> now I do want to change how we handle this R term. So here I can only I'm basically only set this value of R to some fixed number, right? But what if we want something different? Let's just say that um, we would like um, R to be uh, equal to, to, to some uh, sinusoidal varying force right so we can make some kind of explicit function of time there all right in this case I'm gonna create a new function here and instead of passing in R I'm going to calculate it inside of the function all right so I'm going to say that R equals sine of Omega times t okay so we have t that comes in right and um, and then I want to give it to some magnitude of force here f times sine of omega t all right so at each time t it'll calculate what this value of the force is using this function so i'm doing this here numerically i could have done it symbolically also um, but um, there are some things like i can uh, at this point i will be able to swap this out a bit more easily if i don't hard code it in the symbolics for other types of functions and uh, but anyways let's let's go with this we do need though to have um, and some numer numer numbers for this. So let's just say it would be a good, I'm going to say this uh, is a time varying 20 Newton force in omega. Um, let's make omega to be. Um, Is one cycle per second, I guess. So uh, our, our frequency will be one cycle per second, and so uh, radians per second then will be uh, np dot 
2 pi, right? 2 times pi, np uh, pi cycles per second, 2 pi cycles per second. We'll see if that works reasonably well. So now, let's check our eval right hand side and don't need the R vowels anymore. Cannot unpack. Oh yeah. Why is that? Well, this is, is expecting a array. So this value we need to put into the array of item of one item. I think I might need a Keep it like that. There we go. So now I've got this sinusoidal varying force that's captured by this. At every time t, it'll be evaluated, and then we evaluate in dgd, and it moves on, and we get some different result here. All right. So now we have that. <clears throat> we are now ready to simulate the system. So I've got the um, SciPy has uh, many tools for integrating ordinary differential equations. And uh, the primary function for that is this solve IVP, solve initial value problem. And uh, it is uh, a very versatile function. It's going to take the right hand side of the system, right? We've just created that. We have to have it in the terms of function t comma y, right, t is a scalar, and then um, y is this uh, uh, column vector of the states. So we call it, we're calling it x, but we call it y here. We give it time span, t0 to tf to integrate over, we give some initial state values, and it has several different integration methods. The default one is a runga kuta kuta method for uh, 5, 4. And you'll have to work on this in your homework too, uh, to mm, set that up yourself. But um, we'll just use the default. Uh, if you have stiff problems, you can choose some of these other methods. So there's some reasons to choose some of the other methods, and you can even create your own OD solver uh, to use with this function. Um, we will use this T eval too to make sure we get the times uh, that we want. Right, because this integrator will do an adaptive time step, and we can we'll have a look at that. And then we're also going to use this args portion here to pass in if our function has these extra arguments, which ours does. It has a p here, so we're going to use that to pass in the parameter values, which are constant. And then there's uh, other things here. You can um, set the tolerances for the error control. You can provide a Jacobian. Um, if you have a stiff problem, those are uh, quite helpful. And then it's going to return quite a lot of information here um, on uh, hopefully a correct result. And uh, But if not, it can give you information too on why it didn't uh, converge or did. Um, but you'll have to read through the documentation here to get all of the fine details of that. So let's import it first. Uh, and I'm going to do from scipy dot integrate import solve IPP. So now we have that function, and um, I'll call it solution equals solve IPP. The first thing you give it is the right hand side function in the correct form. It has to have tx, and then we've got this extra p. So we're going to do args equals, and then I have to do it in a tuple of length one. So I put a comma there around these two parentheses. I then um, will need um, the function, the t-span, and y0 as the primary inputs. Let's go ahead and create our x0 for us, mp.h stack. And that's going to be q vowels over u vowels. Right. And I'll say that t0 will start at time equals 0. And tf we can simulate just for, uh, let's do 4 seconds in this case. 
So T span is T zero comma T F and then uh, X zero as the initial condition. So that should be enough to solve this system. I'm gonna get an error. Doesn't like something there. Did I pass everything in correctly? T span YO from um, as X O correctly. Seems like it. You don't funk type error, it's crashing in my function. Can I cast you funk solve one input zero from D type zero to D type float? So something is thought of as an object. What did I do wrong? Well, we can figure that out. Let's print what's going on here. It's crashing here, so let's print uh, MD GD. Oh, the, there's still some symbolics, so I am not passing in P correctly. Eval Q, U, P, and R. This one worked. Oh, I know what I did. Um, this is supposed to be P vowels. Boom. All right, that works. Let's get rid of the print statement. And we should get a solution. So if I t look at this, it says the solver successfully reached the end of integration, which that's good. And I can check each of those things separately here. Sol, sol dot message. Okay, great. That's some good news. There was uh, 146 um, function evaluations. Okay, and um, there's a t value that takes us through times, and then there's this y value that takes us through uh, the state trajectory. That gives us the state trajectories. So if I do sol.t, I get the times that are a result, then sol.y um, are the state trajectories versus time. So they're not that interesting to look at um, necessarily, but we should plot them. So we're going to use uh, the most popular plotting tool, uh, matplotlib. And the common way to import that is, is import matplotlib. Uh, Pi plot as plt, and if you're f familiar with um, uh, MATLAB's plotting, this plt interface is, has a lot of similarities, and you, you you should feel comfortable. There's lots of plot plotting libraries and things in, in uh, Python. Um, this is sort of the oldest uh, one, and it gives basic 2D plots. Okay, so let's see if we can plot this. Um, we look at the shape of these arrays we've got 20 values of t and then y is a 6 by 20 array so the easiest way to plot this is if I just do plt dot plot and I give it the x-axis values which are going to be time and then the y-axis values except uh, I need to transpose this for it to work with this one liner. So I'll do that. And there we go. We get some results here. Okay. So it's not not that informative. Um, we can do things to improve the plot. Right? I can like set a uh, x label. Make this time s, right? Um, oh 
Oh yeah, it's not. Uh, it's just X label. Leave for this. There we go. So you can improve the plot. We could add a legend, PLP legend, and I'll just put Q1, Q2, Q3, U1, U2, U3. And, um, oh, these are supposed to be all separate little strings. And then we can see, well, what color lines are the different state trajectories over time. Okay, but still, it's not that, that useful of a plot. Um, one thing that helps here in the notebook, if you do this um, Jupyter command, matplotlib, and then if I call uh, notebook, I can get more of an interactive plot, and I can actually zoom and look at things. So we could check out these lines a little more closely. Right? So I've got some interesting behavior here. We see that um, Q1 uh, or the uh, Q2, let's see, Q2 is this one, Q1 is the blue, Q3 is the green though, and goes quite unstable. And uh, U1 though um, uh, calms down there, slows down, U2 also, and then U3 though um, goes wide. So. Our, our forcing function, I think, is giving way too much force. So let's just, I'm just gonna try one, change it to one Newton, and see if that uh, gives us something more reasonable. Well, we still get this, this growth, but that's fine. That's just different behavior, and we'll uh, have a look at that. All right. I'm going to copy, I created a function for plotting that has all the bells and whistles to try to um, plot these in a more useful way. So let's just copy that, call it plot results. And I'm going to introduce this. And then if I plot results, and then we had uh, soul.t and soul.y, and then I think I have to pass the transpose to this one too. So here we go, we get a more useful looking plot that has each thing broken up. So here we see the, the angle changes of Q1 and Q2, and then we see that the um, distance of Q3, that particle that's on the rod, continues to grow. And I'm not sure that seems realistic because we're, we're giving it a sinusoidal force there. So something seems fishy. Maybe I don't have that quite implemented, right? And then we get the angular rates, okay? And then the speed, it does increase and decrease over time. Um, I guess it's because I don't, if I don't have a, a, a spring holding that Q in place, that we get this kind of behavior. So actually it probably is, we can just keep pushing on it each, each way and it's going to um, continue moving. So maybe this wasn't a great design of a force, especially without having, having that spring in place. Maybe I should have added the force uh, and the spring. Um, Maybe one way to show you uh, this, though, is I can make it behave like a spring. So if I made R equal to be um, negative, and then the K value we used before was um, the KL, 2 newtons per meter. So we'll use that, negative 2.0 times um, the, it's the uh, third Q, right? So that would be Q index 2. So that's a negative KX term for R. I'll just comment this out. 
And this should give me the same result as the online nodes, but we're numerically doing our um, spring right here. Let's try that. I did not like that. Oh yeah, I still need to make this a an array. So it works as expected. And then There we go. We get some uh, behavior that's more similar to believe, what happened in the online notes. Okay. And the spring there that is going is just oscillating back and forth on the rod, minus two meters to two meters. Uh, but then Q2 starts spinning a bit more. So let's. Do I'm going to change my plotting function here. I've got all these plot commands. Um, if we may, if we do something like this, it'll plot, I think, a dotted line. There we go. So let's add that to each one. And you can look up in the MATLAB. There's tons of settings for in the matplotlib library, and uh, I'm not going to teach them all here. You just have to look at the, you know, the resources put right on the website, which are extensive. Um, so there's tons of examples. So if you come to these examples, you can find, you know, these basic type of examples. But then if I click. Um, as examples button up here, there's literally like a hundreds of different plot types that you can find one that you're trying to mimic or, or use parts of, and then you can click it. <clears throat> I'll do this one, and then you can see the code for that and how they how they did that. So and everything links very nicely to the particular documentation page. So it's a really nice documentation to figure out what you want to do. So, and this is one way to set the line type, and it's similar to MATLAB. So now we can see that our integrator only delivered us time at these uh, intervals. Okay, and it's a little jaggedy, right? <clears throat> so, if I want to change that, um, I'm going to grab my this cell where we integrate the equations and there's a T eval optional argument uh, that you can pass specifically the T values that you want so if I want uh, some T's I could do for example a linear spacing from T0 to TF and then I can tell it how many I want so I could say I want instead of just 20, I will run 100. And then if I provide that here, it will now, <clears throat> it will still use the same integrator, but then it's going to um, find at every intermediate value t a, um, a smooth interpolation of that. So I can plot the results again, and we should see. Right, these smoother curves. Okay, <clears throat> at the values that it was evaluated here, though they should match uh, precisely, and um, and then the intermediate values though are added, so you can get more smooth curves. All right, so we are now plotting with matplotlib. We can see if we're getting some kind of reasonable motion. It's uh, not trivial though always to just examine these trajectories and know like is the system moving as we expect and we can uh, look here that uh, you know we've got Q1 that's just oscillating back and forth so that's the rod hanging from the first rod A and then the other rod though is just continuing continuing to spin and it reaches almost 200 degrees so it's approaching it'll eventually do a full rotation there it seems or maybe not right and then the particle on the rod 
yeah, is, is doing this sinusoid-like oscillation back and forth along rod B. Right, so it seems reasonable, but being able to uh, visually animate these uh, results is going to help quite a lot. So I'm not going to type all the code here because there's some boilerplate that you have to add, but I show you how to create a basic uh, animation with matplotlib here. And I create some extra points to plot. And then I make a new lambda pi function that basically evaluates the x, y, and z global coordinates in the in the in frame in our case uh, of all of these points. And if we plot all these points, then we end up with a visualization that we might want. So I'm going to just copy that code over. So first, um, I'll create the points and these will add two points at the end of rod b so that the rod b will actually look like a, a rod with some size and then i'll create this this is the lambda phi code that um oops evaluates then these points that we want to plot so i get for each row x uh, each row is X, uh, Y, or Z, and each column represents each of the points that we want to plot. And if you line them up uh, and choose their order correctly, we can then make a plot here. And I'm just going to copy the plot code because it'll take me a while to type. But I basically evaluate the points for the initial conditions, right? Create a new figure of a certain size. I create, in this case, th four subplots. And the, one of them is going to be a 3D plot, and the other ones will be different views. Okay. I set some common properties. I'm going to make the lines black, and the, the markers will be blue and of a certain size, and they will be represented by a circle. And then I carefully set up my um, different views. So looking at the top, uh, the front, and the right side view of our system. And, I, and if you'll have to take a look at these x limits, how I managed to do that, and whether I put x or y or z uh, in these views. Um, but we end up with um, a plot here. That should show, and I think I'll need, there we go. So this shows in the initial configuration, I just plotted a dot for each of the points. And it looks like it uh, shows things correctly. So that was it's a bit of magic, right, to go from there to there. And it took me a while personally to you know make sure I had all of my limits and I was plotting the right views. And uh, but once you get that all worked out, you should be able to make some kind of image here. So this looks like what we expect. You've got two equal length rods, right? This is AO and BO. This is the particle Q in an initial configuration. And then um, we have uh, the two extra points that I add that show the end of the rod. So to animate this, you have to create a function. And we will import this func animation uh, class. And then we are going to create function that updates the plot at every time step. So I've got this function animate. It takes an index i, right, the ith frame. And that in the i frame, I am going to evaluate the um, state values at the ith time and I'm going to get just the cues out of there and I think I need to create an excess and that's going to be our soul.t and then we're going to make a transpose to make the dimensions correct so I get the ith set of cues I have to pass in the p-values because that's where the length 
and are, are stored of the rods. And then I use these uh, set data functions, set data and set data 3D, to just simply update the data. Right? We don't want to redraw the entire plot. We just want to uh, keep the same figure that we have, but um, update that plot. Okay. And um, we can we can manually do this actually. So if I call animate and uh, give it an I. We had a hundred time points, so let's just say at fifty, and I call that I too many indices. Um, two or in array is one dimensional, but two are indexed. Let's check what XS looks like. It's only a hundred. Oh, it's not sold T. It's sold Y. That was my mistake. And notice it, the end, the figure updated up there. So I. If I just change this to uh, 99, I can see the different frames of the figure that we're looking at. Right? So our animate function, you can test your animate function to see if that figure updates. It will only update though if I have this uh, matplotlib, where did I put that? This matplotlib notebook that makes it this interactive and it can update uh, in a live sense. Alright, so we've got our animate function. Now to drive the animation, um, we have to create then, we have to use this, we tell uh, there's an animation function, it's going to update the fig that we have above, so I have this fig defined that has our four panel plot. It's going to use the animate function here to update that plot, and then um, this is just going to be sol.t. Right, so it, number of frames is the length of time. So I can click create that animation, and you can create videos um, with this. For example, actually, I, I could try it for you. Um, so there are two HTML5 video, and what settings did I use for this? I did do it FPS equals 30, so I think I can do that here too. So this may fail. I can't remember if I have the video functions working. I guess it doesn't take an FPS. Let's try that. It could take a minute. There we go. So it did something, but I get this big HTML video tag. The way to display this is from I Python dot display and we can see oh yeah that I'm getting the animation up here in the interactive plot um, which also shows you it going on uh, I'm gonna stop that though and you do that by pressing this stop interaction button and I want to uh, display so from my find a import HTML I believe and then you can put HTML around this and that should properly display this there we go so I have I, this is actually an HTML5 video that's showing that that animation It looks like we've got a realistic system. Motion that may be expected here. Um, the other one is the this JavaScript one, which also works. And it, and it gives you some nice playback, playback uh, features, so I'll do that also. Please take a minute or so probably to generate. And then I get these playback buttons. And if you set things up with the frames per second correctly, you can get it to uh, you know move at approximately real time so that you can see if that's expected to. If, it, if it's not, you can slow this one down right to look at it more closely. But we've got a basic animation. So that's 
how you can uh, simulate your system using the solve IVP. Right? You have to set that up and um, get the simulation working that you want. Um, there's a lot of CAN solvers available in SciPy that you should investigate and learn about. Uh, depending on your system, you'll have to think about the uh, truncation error and uh, integration error, floating point error that is associated with that particular solver in your system. Um, but for most systems that are so-called non-stiff, uh, these the Rungakura uh, 5.4 method will usually work nicely. And you can get a, uh, a good result on the simulation here. And then lastly, I show you how to define basic plots, animations in Matplotlib, and how you can you should use those to see if in fact you get motion that you think you should get for your multi-body dynamic system. Okay, so we'll leave it at that, and uh, and uh, that should get you going for this week's excitement.